that energy is there. Like you have the ability to be healthy. What we need to live our best selves and whatever form that takes on is inside of us. It's just understanding not necessarily how do you add to that or take away from it, but how is the energy that you have being altered? This is the Made for Living Well podcast, hosted by Alexa Sherm, the place to create a life well lived. Welcome back to this podcast. As always, my name's Alexa, and this is the place where I believe you were made for living well. I know it's hard to understand, but today on the podcast, we are going to talk about just that, how health is inside of you, but even to understand there is a bigger picture to health than just your body. Today, we're going to talk about your body, mind, and soul and how it relates to your energy level. I'm so excited for today's conversation as it goes with the monthly theme for the 2023 planner, and that's all about how to get more energy. Now, I know everyone struggles with energy, but you do not have to. And it's just understanding energy in a new way that I think brings to light how you can actively change without forcing your body into a state of pain. Basically, how you can make health work for you. Now, today on the show, I brought back Peyton, my husband, as we share more about our journey, what we're learning, and we just dive in to make this month the best that it can be. So I'm so excited to have him on the show. Now, today we do talk about the Nourish Planner. So if you haven't gotten a planner, there's a few left. You can find that at thelivingwell.com and they're on sale right now. So you're gonna wanna check that out because we're going through it all month long. Again, that's at thelivingwell.com. While you're there, you need to sign up for my email list because we're releasing a free resource and a quiz on how to get more energy that's going to help you understand your energy threshold, which you'll learn about inside the podcast, and what you can do to actively get more energy in your life. You can do all of that at thelivingwell.com. Now, today is a longer podcast, so I'm gonna get right to the show and welcome Peyton. Welcome back to the podcast, Peyton. Thanks, you sound really excited to have me on. (laughs) Okay, but in all fairness, this month went really fast. I felt like we just did this. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're gonna say that every time though. I know, it's true. So in other words, don't say that because it's really annoying that everyone always says that. I get your point. Okay. So today like I just podcast last week. I know. Well, you did. (laughs) Okay. Today we're gonna talk about energy, which is ironic because I'm feeling kind of tired. (laughs) You sound tired. I know. I know. Last month was hard. I'm not gonna lie. I got sick. And then we got sick. We but we got sick, but mine lasted way longer than yours. But then really, I feel like I'm still battling like this chest congestion slash. I know cough. it's really surprising considering you know men usually get man colds that I am I'm complaining longer than you are. Oh yeah, <laughs> but we found mold in my pillow. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Um, it's so <laughs> embarrassing. You, it's so embarrassing that someone who is allergic to mold, like not just a little allergic, like bad. And I would sleep on a water pillow of all things. Like on the other side, it sounds so, so dumb that I would do this. But that water pillow was really comfortable. And you had used it for five, six years and you never had a problem. Right. Well, I've been using a water pillow since I was in high school. But this was a newish one that was five or six years old. Somehow it had sprung a leak that we didn't know about it because they also had it in like a mold resistant pillowcase kind of thing, um, which I don't know if it's helping or making it worse. And then we found it when we were washing the sheets. You found it. I didn't, I didn't really even pay attention. And you were like, oh my gosh, your pillow's covered in mold. No wonder I was yeah. sick for so long. Yeah, you were. You had pulled it out of the cover to wash it and just set it on the bed. And I walked by and was like, something doesn't look right. So I flipped it over um, because I could only see just a little bit of it on the bottom. And when I flipped it over, like a third of the bottom was all covered in mold. Oh my gosh. Horrible. But needless to say, after we got rid of the pillow, I started sleeping really well. I had not been sleeping well. Like I was so congested. I couldn't breathe. And needless to say... 
I think a lot of it was because of that stupid pillow. It makes sense, though. It does. So don't sleep on a water pillow if you have one, especially if you're allergic to mold. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm trying or out maybe a new check, pillow. Maybe check it more often. Right. Okay, but here's the deal. Pillows harbor a lot of mold in general. Did you know that? I feel like we talked about we've talked about this before. Because, right? Like you're constantly breathing on it, so you're really just putting moisture into it all the time. And depending on well, and all what, the that's not adding to um all the mo- the chemicals and oils and whatever else from your skin that are getting into it every night. Right. And memory foam, a lot of people sleep on memory foam pillows, probably including you. And they do like to store mold. This is true. Yeah. So I'm trying out a new pillow. I don't know the name of it. I feel like someone's going to email me and ask, what what kind of pillow do you recommend? I will I will get it back. I will get a name to you, hopefully by the show notes. But I do like it. It's going well. But I feel like I got a new pillow a year ago and I liked it initially. And I feel like I hate it now. Am I doomed? Is that what you're saying? (laughs) No, I'm just saying, I feel like it's probably unfair after having it for like two weeks to be like, oh my gosh, this is the best pillow in the world. I know. Will I go back to a water pillow? Will you? (laughs) Never. I can't. Although the water pillow was really comfortable. So heavy, but so comfortable. I'm not. I won't do it again because I did get really sick this last month and I felt like it completely derailed where I had gotten, which... We had just talked about why my health was stuck in in November. I struggled with a health thing. So we really don't know how long my pillow has been moldy and how long I just was completely oblivious to the fact that it was that way. Um, So maybe I was sick in November and December because of that too, or not feeling well, even though I got myself out of it. But now I'm feeling well, but I still feel like my body is trying to catch up, trying to heal, trying to rejuvenate, which I don't think that we take into account the space that our body actually needs to heal. And when we feel tired, we automatically just hate it or try to mask it with coffee or energy drinks or just kind of pushing your body through, almost like to beat it into submission in some sort of way that we really hate that process. So when we talk about energy, I feel like this gets really confusing because your body should be tired when it's healing, when it's just at the end of a hard day. But you should also have periods throughout your day where you feel really energized and alive. And so I don't think it's fair to say that we should be energized 100% of the time. So even though I'm tired, I don't necessarily think that I have a true energy problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. So every month we're going along inside the planner with the topics of the planner. And if you don't have a planner, there's still a few left. You can still snag one. But this month it's all about energy. And I have really learned to love the topic of energy, even though it can feel really woo-woo and out there for a lot of people. But energy is becoming, I think, what is like this central thread that doesn't just run throughout our body, but through our mind and our soul. And I just want to bring some normalcy to the topic of energy, not just in how do I get more of it, but actually how I balance it. Now, you've heard me talk a lot about energy. So energy is probably really normal for you too, right? Yeah, but I feel like there's kind of two different ways I feel like people look at it. One being like, oh man, I'm really tired. That type of energy. And there's this whole other realm of people discussing energy around like, oh, your feminine energy or like fill in the blank, that type of energy, which feels completely different. Can you explain how those really aren't different and how they tie together? Yeah. Do you understand it though? Not completely. No. (laughs) So you're kind of bringing up this feminine energy, masculine energy, because I signed up for a class that I'm making both of us go through. And it's like talking about polarity. And that, again, it feels so distinct and separate from our physical energy. But when we really look at energy, it's all the same. It's just how that energy is being altered. And and I think part of the human mind 
to understand and comprehend things, we like to like box up information, right? Like we like to, even in our lives, like we like to separate out things because we think we have more understanding and maybe more control. So like a lot of people have their work life, their home life, their workout life. Like we rarely see this thread of just your life in general. You have something to say. Yeah, I feel like, is it is it fair to describe it as a physical energy versus an emotional energy? Because I, I feel mean, like so many people when they they're like, I'm so tired, I need caffeine to get through the day, like those types of discussions around energy, that's like a physical energy. But I feel like there's a whole nother emotional component to it that is really easy to ignore. Or like you said in the beginning, it feels really woo woo or out there, like only the crazy people talk about that. Yeah, but it's easy to ignore, but it's all the same energy. I know, but I'm saying I feel like so many people only recognize it as like physical energy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but think about emotional like, component to it is something that isn't as, um, as talked about. Right. But if you want to link them together, just like think about the last time you were really, really exhausted. How was your mental capacity? It's usually really singular focused. It's almost right. like you're, um, you go into survival mode. You, you can't like think outside the box. You probably can't have a lot of thoughts. You're probably not willing to engage someone in a lot of conversation. I mean, mentally, you're maybe not in a negative state, but I wouldn't necessarily say that you're overly engaged mentally because you're so physically exhausted that you also don't have the mental capacity to really drive the mindset component. So does the physical energy drive the emotional? I mean, I think you're asking for the chicken or the egg, right? Which came first? Is that what you're looking for? Maybe. I I don't think that there is I don't think that we can say which one comes first because I think we can be exhausted on both ends of the spectrum. Like you can get yourself mentally exhausted and physically exhausted. But if you're looking for like a percentage, I think our mindset or our mental or what they call emotional energy is a much larger percentage of our total energy. So there's like estimates that say about 70% of all of our energy actually comes from this emotional state. So let's say like you're really physically exhausted at the end of the day. But if you have, like if you're coming home and you're eating with your family and you're laughing and you're having a good time, that's going to boost your energy. So you're not going to feel as depleted as if you come home from the day where you're physically exhausted and then you're beating yourself up or you get into an argument with your spouse or the kids are crazy and you're just overwhelmed. Like your mental energy is going to deplete you faster than even the physical energy. So our mental energy, we know, accounts for the majority of our total energy. Like you can be completely physically exhausted, but physically exhausted is very different than emotionally drained. Yeah, which is also why when you are physically exhausted, you can push yourself through that. Right. If you have the right mindset. Yes. If Mm -hmm. your emotional energy is high enough that you can push yourself through more physical pain. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, no, I see what you're saying. It's not, it's not that one necessarily leads into the other, but both lead into each other and you can deplete, you can deplete one, which affects the other. Yeah. It's like the last podcast that I had on with Nisia and she was talking about like the mental side of it and how she's a therapist, right? And she, if you haven't listened, go back and listen. But you listened to the first part so far. I don't think you've listened to part two yet. But where she basically was saying like she was trying to do all this therapy with people because she's a psychologist by trade. She works more in the mindset space, but she was realizing like she just couldn't get anywhere because their bodies were living in survival mode not just mentally, but whatever's happening inside of our mind is happening inside of our body. And what's happening inside of our body is happening inside of our mind. It's this continuous loop that, yes, we can alter on one end of the spectrum or the other, but really if we neglect one for a long period of time, we're never going to make progress in the other area. 
So what I appreciated about her was to say, like, if you're really going to do the mental work, like if you're really going to work on healthifying your mind, you can't do that without also working on your body, without also supplying the needs that your body has to produce the energy so that your body can do the job of healing, rejuvenating, um, releasing some of those stored emotions. Like we have to be in a safe environment for our body to do that job. And I think that we neglect, like when we look at energy as a whole, energy is all the same. Spiritual energy, emotional energy, physical energy, it's all the same. We can segment it off to make ourselves feel better and try to have some control over that, but they're all running together. And this is really how our entire system works and why we're not just a body, but we're a soul in a body. And we're not just a mind, but our mind is inside the body that also has a soul. Like they're all connected. And when we start to see that connection, I think we can start to realize, okay, energy is easier to understand than these segmented boxes we try to micromanage. I feel Mm -hmm. like I was going somewhere with that and I lost my train of thought in the middle of that. Well, one of the things that I thought about um, with that is I... I continually come back. You have a visual that you use so many times in different ways, but the idea of the pendulum and how you look at that within your physical and emotional energy and how if you sway one one way too far and you deplete yourself, then you almost have to swing all the way back and rely on. So like if you're emotionally drained, you have to rely on your physical energy to pull you back to a centered position. And Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's also a good visual to think about with, uh, with that. Now you add in spiritual and now you add a third dimension and it gets a little more complicated. I know some people can't visualize 3D. (laughs) (laughs) Are you speaking for yourself? (laughs) No, I I can see it. Okay. But you hear me talk a lot about it. So let's just back up for a second because I really want to explain energy on this podcast. And then we're going to take both of our lives and understand, okay, how are we out of balance? Like we're really just going to help to show how this all works because it really does all come together. And what I hate so much about health, and even yesterday I was like, I I just hate, like sometimes I can't even stand to be in this space. And it's not because I don't think that health is possible, but we have such a narrow view of health that it's really hard to break outside of that because it's compli- it's, it feels more complicated to look at ourselves as a whole, even though it's simple. <laughs> it makes health so much easier, but we're so used to just complexifying it down into these specific systems where we have our hormonal system, we have our cardiovascular system, we have our lymphatic system, we have our mind, right? And like we separate them out as a way to understand them. But what I really think needs to happen is we have to understand it as a whole, as our whole system, because when one area falls out of balance, like Nisia was saying, right? Like you can work on your mind as much as you want, but if your body's out of balance and it doesn't have the energy it needs and the support that that it needs to produce energy, you're not going to make a lot of progress in your mind and vice versa, right? If you're making, trying to make all this progress and why I have people who are like, I do everything right. But if they have a bad mindset about it, if they don't believe they can be healthy or if they don't believe that um, they can be thin, right? Like if they say like, I'm always going to be fat, like you're you're really never going to see the progress that you want to see. And likewise, on the backside of that, like I think where our soul comes in is that really is our identity. Like what are we identifying with? And that that's going to create the energy or it's going to deplete us of our energy if we have a bad identity that we're really never going to make strides in this life. Like we're always going to be stuck. So I like to think about it as like you have your mind and your body, but I think the soul, like if it's a triangle, like I think your soul is at the top and that's ultimately feeding the energy into those other areas because your identity at the end of the day is controlling all aspects of your life uh, and where you identify with. But what I was going to say is the house face is really hard for me because I think we put so much emphasis on it. And we had a sermon yesterday that was talking about this and he was talking about vanity and gluttony and all these sins that people struggle with in the flesh. And she was like, looked right at me because that's the job of the hell space, right? Is like, we try to fix gluttony, but we only become more gluttonous. Is gluttonous word? <laughs> yeah. And we try to fix our 
self-confidence, but we only fixate more on our vanity, right? Like we try to do all these things. We try to make steps, what feels like in the right direction. And I think there is benefit there that we have to move in these steps because healthifying the whole healthifies the soul and the mind, like all of us, right? So we have to have health, but how we go about health can be extremely damaging and actually pull us in the opposite direction. It's what Brené Brown called like the near enemy. Like the near enemy of health is maybe diets, right? Like you think you're doing all these right things, but is it really just pulling you further away from what it actually means to live healthy? And so when we look at all this, like, yes, I wanted to leave the health space. Sometimes I have a hard time talking just about the body and why I'm so passionate about energy is because it combines all of it together to recognize you can't just healthify one area of your life without healthifying the others. Like they all go together. And when one is out of balance, they're all going to fall out of balance or they're going to try to compensate. And eventually that's going to pull you out of balance if you don't help to foster and support the whole of who you are. I give this analogy in a project that I'm working on. And I'm not an electrician, but you've helped me understand this because you took a lot more physics than I ever did. <laughs> yeah. But like a light light socket, right? Do you remember when I was writing about the light socket and, and a mm-hmm. light bulb? Like there's yep. numerous wires that it takes in order to illuminate a light bulb. Like it's not just one wire that if you hook up to the light bulb or the light socket, it's automatically going to illuminate your bulb. So if we look at the light bulb as your body and we look at the socket as saying like there is specific connections that are needed in order for the light bulb to glow, in order for the light bulb to come alive. And there's actually three wires, correct? There's three wires, which makes it a great analogy for this because you have your ground wire. You have your, tell me, I can't remember now. Neutral. Neutral. And you have your... Power. Power. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It's been a minute since I wrote this. And then I've read it like a a number of times. So you have power, neutral, and your ground wire. So we can think of your body as the power wire, right? Like that's your tool to live. That's your tool to get out and live life. Like it's powering your purpose. Then we have your neutral wire, which I like to look at your mind as the neutral wire. Technically, your mind is taking in information, processing through it. It's deciding what it should focus on and what it should let go. Like it's filtering tons of information. And I don't want to say necessarily the goal is to keep it neutral, but in some ways it's trying to create this balance inside, trying to create some sort of harmony and safety. How we define safety is really going to come a lot from your mind. So what is your mind picking up and perceiving as a threat or as safety. And then your ground wire, the wire that just like grounds you to life is what I call your soul. You can't have one wire connected and not have the other three connected and illuminate the bulb. Even what happens if you connect the wire, the the power wire to the bulb, but you don't have the ground wire? I'm asking, honestly, I have no idea what happens. Would it glow? Now you're... No. No. Because it has to have somewhere to it has to have somewhere to go. Come on. Come on. Bring out your engineering. You're like, this is like the heartbeat of your education. Tell me what happens. Well, I'm not an electrical engineer. So (laughs) um you're asking more. Um, but no, you're the live power wire is what carries the voltage. The neutral um is what the live wire passes into to complete the circuit the ground is there basically as a protection so that if something goes wrong the electricity bypasses all the way back into the literal ground so and when i was writing this now i'm thinking second guessing it did i call the body the ground and the source of energy was your soul. It could have been. I don't okay. remember. We'd Either have, we way, should, it yeah. doesn't. 
I mean, either way, you get the image, right? The Someday I'm going to like actually explain this in a way that makes sense. Maybe by podcast number six that we do together, we can actually yeah. do this. <laughs> well, but, I'll, uh, I'll brush up. I'll brush up on things before <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll hash it out before we. This uh, is out of my scope of practice. But either way. Both of takes- ours. Please. Please. <laughs> remind, this is not mine either. Okay. But. It takes all three. And without one, it doesn't work, even if there's power coming in. And I think it's such a good analogy because I think we so often miss the health of our minds and the health of our soul, just chasing the health of our body. And the body matters. Like, don't get me wrong. It greatly matters. But so do the others. Like, we have to understand that the others matter too. And so when we look at the body as a whole, we see energy moving from the body into the mind, through the soul. Like, it's just this continuous loop. And so if one part of us is out of balance, we're naturally going to be depleted. So say, for instance, we have people who are constantly emailing me saying, I've done everything right. I don't know what's why it's working or why it's not working. I'm gaining weight. I've been doing all this stuff. And, and part of it is, okay, you might be doing all the right things in your body, but what's the health of your mind like? Like, what are you focusing on? Where is your hope? Like, what are those identities that you're going to cling to and those belief systems that are really creating the outcome of your life? So when we talk about energy, I think it's really important to understand that all energy is the same, whether it's mental energy, spiritual energy, again, Um, emotional energy, whether it's the energy that lights a light bulb, right? Like we use energy all the time. It's just hard to understand the energy is the same that's inside of you. But even when we look at like the nervous system, right? It's electrical impulses that are being sent that are controlling all of the movements that are being able to allow us to speak, to have thoughts. Like all of that are electrical charges, that are being sent through our system. We just don't talk about it a lot other than saying, I literally have no energy. I'm tired all the time. What can I do about it? But even tired and exhaustion is a common trait, right? Like if you're not tired, are you really working hard enough? Are you really, you know, climbing the ladder? Like the whole busyness thing that we live with. But all of the energy is the same. It's Not necessarily what you do with it. It's how it's being altered. Explain your last comment. So all energy is the same. It's not, it's not gaining more. Like what I want to try to understand, because I think when we look at energy inside of our body, again, it's either we're so tired, we're exhausted all the time, or we also tend to calculate energy. So it's like how, you know, the secret to weight loss is, consuming less than you burn. But that equation doesn't work, not long-term. It might work in the short-term, which is why people have done it for decades. But in the long-term, it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because that's not how energy works. It's not about just adding and subtracting energy out of your body. And when you feel depleted, it's not to say energy isn't there. Energy is always there. Like, I don't know much about physics, but I know the first law of thermodynamics states that energy is neither created nor destroyed, which means we do not have the ability to add or subtract energy. Not like we think we do, right? Like it's not like, oh, if I just don't add energy to my body through all this food, then I'm going to deplete my body of energy and therefore I will force my body to burn weight to produce energy. I'll force my body to burn fat to produce energy and I'll lose weight. Like, that's what we think. But the first law of thermodynamics refutes that statement to say energy is neither created nor destroyed, but it's only altered. And this is where I think things really change and why I like this concept so much, because it states that energy is there. Like, you have the ability to be healthy. Yes, you might have a disease or symptoms or... Um, You might have been born with a genetic condition. Like I get our idea of what health is. It's going to be very personal for each of us. But what we need to live our best selves and whatever form that takes on is inside of us. 
It's just understanding not necessarily how do you add to that or take away from it, but how is the energy that you have being altered? Because that's going to make it feel like you don't have energy, even though it's there. It's just understanding what is altering my energy to make me feel this way. Well, and I think too, if you go back to the formula of what I eat minus what I burn, um, as long as that's in a deficit, then I will lose weight. But what you're not taking into account is the impact that other people are having on you, what life stress has on you. Um, If you have a deadline at work, if you have um, a young baby that gets you up multiple times in the night, like that simple calculation doesn't take into affect the emotional toll that a lot of those other things have on you, which depletes you of energy. And so I think it's been too simplistic to just look at it as um, a plus and a minus and just an easy calculation. And that's, I think what you're trying to help people see is there's so much more involved in this that you need to consider um, within living your life than it is just, hey, as long as I eat this and I work out and do this, then X will happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that might work for the short period, but eventually the body is going to become like when we pull our body out of balance from that. And why I like the idea of the pendulum is to show it's not about adding or taking away energy, but it's about creating this balance and energy and the whole of who you are. Because when you pull yourself out of balance so long, your body eventually has to compensate for that. That creates this space of unsafe. Like it creates this threat inside your body. And I think the missing component, I don't think, science shows us that the missing component to the equations of calories in equals calories out or this equation of energy is actually what you just said. It's it's stress. And I think that is what is going to determine how our energy is being altered, whether we're stressed or whether we're not stressed. Now, yeah, there are other factors in our in our life, like circadian rhythm. And a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, intermittent fasting and new science on intermittent fasting. Like when you eat is going to change what your body does with that. It's going to alter how your body uses that energy. But that also comes back into say, whether it's in a time of stress or whether it's in a time of safety. So stress is going to be like that other extra bit inside that equation that really defines what your body is going to do with the energy that you have and the energy that you're being influenced by. And I think we can say, well, stress isn't something that we can actually measure, which true, right? We we all are feeling stress in different ways, but what is going to be a threat to you is far different than what's going to be a threat to me. Because of our past experiences, because of our culture, because of the way that we were raised, because of so many situations, because of I don't want to even say our faith, but our faith is going to maybe help ground us. But even our perception of faith or where we stand in our faith or our spirituality, spiritual energy is going to shift, again, how safe or unsafe our body is or our perception of stress. But if we go back to like the simplistic view of to say like, okay, even if we talk about food energy, right? It's not just about what you eat because we could eat the exact same meal and I could gain five pounds from it and you could lose five pounds from it. Why? Like there's actual research to show this, that they take groups of people and feed them the exact same diet and some people will gain weight and some people will lose weight. Why? Why does this happen? Genetics, hormones, all those things that we could say. But yes, at the end of the day, they're all running based on the level of stress inside your system and the level of stress that you can handle. And so it really comes back to how is that supporting your energy or altering your energy in a positive or negative kind of way? Not to say that you can add or take away from it, but how it's showing it. Is it coming out as external energy that you can use to live? Or is it suppressive energy that makes you tired and kind of go inward and start to feel like there's threats all around you? Am I making sense? Yeah. So... You talk a lot about energy fills and energy drains. Mm -hmm. Um, Which one do you feel like you have more control over? I think you have control over both. However, I feel like 
Maybe we should step back and explain energy fills and energy drains. Yeah. So if we go back and look at this picture of health, right, we can say, okay, it's energy is being altered, which means it's not about adding energy. Like you're okay, like if you're tired and you like to guzzle caffeine in the form of iced tea, you probably just like iced tea. I don't think you're doing it for the caffeine. Yeah, I just like it. Yeah. There, but there's people but who, there may but there may be an underlying um subconscious thing going on that's like, oh hey, this brings me caffeine, even though I don't recognize that I need that or that I crave that, but it might be that my body is like, hey, you should drink this because you're actually depleted on energy and you you think you need this stimulant to make up for that. Right. It becomes an addictive. I mean, we know caffeine is an addictive substance. And I think it is because our drive for energy is the number one mechanism that's going to prove whether we're in a safe or unsafe environment. So if we have plenty of energy, our body's functioning relatively well, we're going to heal, rejuvenate. We're not going to get sick as often. I mean, we're always going to get sick to some degree, but like we're going to be able to heal from that. Um, we're going to feel energized. Our mind's going to work well. Like all of these things are going to go well. And I think when we start to feel little bits of that high energy state, even if it's from an artificial form like caffeine, it creates this dopamine rush that makes us feel really good. And that feeling that you feel good is addictive, right? Why do people do drugs? They don't necessarily just walk themselves into saying like, I'm going to be a drug addict because that's what I want to be. They become addicted to the feeling that's created because of the drug. It's the same with pornography or any addiction. It's not the act. It's the feeling that's created. No matter how minute or how short-lived that feeling is, that feeling of euphoria or that feeling that just makes you feel good for a brief moment of time is what people become addicted to. What I'm trying to say is we have the ability to create those good feelings within us but only when we understand how to control our energy. Not from the standpoint of what we can add to it, but by understanding what is altering our energy in a positive or a negative way. And the only way to really do this is to understand that there's tons of power in altering our energy in our soul and in our mind, not just our body. And if we're not doing it for the whole of who we are, if we're just focusing on our body, we're not gonna make the strides that we need to, to really experience that high. And I don't want to say like doing this is going to make you feel high, but like high on life. (laughs) Um, But you're going to get that high, that like euphoria of like that satisfaction because it's all coming together. Yeah, This is getting deeper than I anticipated. But again, it goes back and I will reiterate this over and over and over. And why I cannot just talk about the body is because the body is only one third, maybe not even that, but it's only one third of the whole of who we are. Like we cannot neglect our soul and our mind and the scope of health and how they're all working together. Yeah. I mean, you even go back to the summer uh, podcast series that you did, the sex talk, and you even think back to that and how many times did you talk about um just within that area of health how much energy has to play you know on things that deplete you or energize you and just things that increase or decrease your libido within that i mean that's just that's just a small area within our lives but if you take that same concept there are all of these different ways within our life that the energy impacts the way that you function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when we go back to energy fills and energy drains, and this is what I want to talk about for both of us, because they're going to be very different, but technically an energy fill is not something that's going to add to your energy, but an energy fill is something that's altering your energy in a way that makes you feel energized. So it's kind of a twist. It's not to say I'm just adding energy. So you can't say an energy fill is drinking your IC because more than likely that's not necessarily an ener- true energy fill for you. That's just adding artificial energy. I'm talking true energy. 
And that makes you feel like it's it's something that's coming into your body to support your body or your mind or your soul in a way that alters that energy to live it out. Something that is negative energy or an energy drain is something that's going to alter your energy that creates more of a threat inside your system or that it's taking energy to process through. And therefore, it's going to start to store, hoard, and conserve that energy. Um, And so you don't have the energy to live. Yeah. Perfect example is, you know, we talked about the beginning that we have kind of been under the weather for the past couple of weeks off and on. And um, I mean, it's been negative 20, whatever, um, off and on here lately. And I just had no motivation to work out. Well, you would call working out depleting yourself of energy typically. But Mm -hmm. this morning I went on the first run that I've gone on in a few weeks and I came home and do you remember what I told you? You feel so energized. Yes. Um, so it's, it's thinking about it in that way, um, which again, I feel like comes back to what we kind of talked about, the difference between physical and emotional energy, because physically, obviously my body was more tired than when I didn't do it, but emotionally I was able to overcome that, mentally overcome that because the the boost of energy that that gave me helps me overcome more than overcome any of the physical exertion that I, that I had. So that's one of those for me, that's an energy fill is actually working out, which Mm -hmm. is backwards from what I think a lot of people would think of it as. Right. Because that would be a calorie deficit, putting you in a calorie deficit or taking calories or energy because calories is a metric of energy, but yeah. But yes, working out in the right way, working out can be incredibly depleting for a lot of people. I think when they just focus on the body aspect of it, like when you're just working out to lose weight or to lose inches or to build muscle, like it's not to say those things are necessarily wrong, but when they're not done with the mindset component and, and even, you know, you could go as far as to say everything has a spiritual component to it based on our motivation and our driving force behind it. Um, but if it's not done from that, then it can be incredibly draining on our system as a whole, right? And I think when people do this, when they get so fixated on the body, they push and push and push and push and push and they either hate it, so they quit, or they push and push and push and push and their body burns out and they get injured or sick. Um, and so that's really where this whole, we can't just work out for the sake of changing our body, but we have to do it because, or, or we have to look at it and say, okay, but. I can move my body. There's a million ways to do that. What is going to be the most filling for me as a whole? Like what is going to alter my energy in a positive way, not just take my energy? And like you said, for you, that's running. Working out in general. Working out. Yeah. Not just necessarily running only. Uh, okay. But you've had a bad view of lifting weights for a long time. Um, I don't know that I've had a bad view of it. I've not been motivated to do it. Mm. Yeah, why? I feel like it was always something that I did with groups of people, like whether it was in athletics or when you own the gym, it was always group classes. It was always like a group setting. And I feel like I I kind of need that external motivation to do that, which is why I feel like I've done better with running because I've been running with other people. And that has helped me be more consistent. It's, it's way more difficult. I feel like for me to text somebody at 5 AM, Hey, I know you're awake, but I'm going to go back to bed. Sorry. Then it is to just say, you know what? Forget it. It, They're already up. I'm already up. I might as well just go do this. And then at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, it makes you feel better about it. Um, I don't have that really. Other than if you ask me to do it um, with. uh, But even that's a fight. Yeah. Um, So I don't know. But one one of the things um, I was going to say as an energy drain for me, and then I'm going to ask you about. Are you changing the subject? I am. (laughs) (laughs) Is uh, for me, an energy drain, which again, you would think this is opposite, is overeating. 
Mm. Like you think the more, the more you take in, the more energy you have, but I feel like it's easy for me to overdo it to the point where my body just gets sluggish. Um, Mm -hmm. Like if we have a family gathering or um, we're together with friends and we're grazing and then we're eating and all that, I overeat every single time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a, that's actually an energy drain for me. Like when I wake up the next day, um, I feel horrible, like almost Mm -hmm. every time. Um, So here you have something you would normally think, which is working out. You would normally think, well, that depletes your energy. And I hear I'm saying that actually gives me energy. And here I'm saying eating, overeating is something that normally you would think, oh, you're intaking more energy. If you go back to the calories in, calories out, like that means my calories in, um, you know, that's, that's more energy in, but it actually depletes me of energy. Um, cause my body is like, what the heck are you doing to me? But, yeah. um, what about you? Well, I want to go feeling? back and, okay, don't, I'll say that. And then, okay. Okay. Uh, I'll answer your question. Um, I'm a really good interviewer cause it usually keeps the focus off me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> energy um, fill and then an energy drain. Yeah. So I think for me, one of my biggest energy fills and why I, again, stress it all the time, but like soul care to me is so important because I think that is such an integral part about what I believe and my identity. And like it switches my focus from the threats of life and brings me back into a a healthier perspective. So for me, like reading and praying and getting in the word, like, you know, my faith is so important in keeping me filled. And honestly, I don't know how people really live filled without it. Um, And so that to me is something like on the days that I do and don't do, let's spend time with Jesus and like feeling like I'm in that. I notice a huge difference because it changes and alters the way I think. And that is going to change how I feel. So for me, that is a huge energy fill. Um, also moving my body, but I feel like there are things that I do that move my body that actually fill me. And there are things that I used to do that to move my body that drain, drain me. So like things I love, like strength training, I feel like that is so filling for me. Um, even hit workouts, walking, but running is a massive energy drain. And, and it didn't used to be that way, but then, you know, I got sick and I'll hunt all this stuff for whatever reason energy just pushes my body into a state of depletion, even if I try to have the right mindset about it. Like I just can't ever feel good after I do it. And I want to, but you know it, you, you've seen me, I swell, like for whatever reason, that is a massive energy drain to my system. So I've just cut it out. Like I just don't do it and I can do all this other stuff. Um, and you try to, you try to do it every so often thinking like, oh, maybe I'm well enough now, or maybe, you know, things have changed, but you always keep coming back to that for whatever reason that we have yet to figure out. Right. And I think it shows again, that harmony between the body and the mind. Like if one area makes it feel unsafe, it's going to be unsafe because I've done all the mindset work to make myself feel like I really do like it. Like I really do like the act of running, but for whatever reason, my body is a threat on my system. And it just leaves me drained and my body, it takes a long time for my body to recover from that. And so for me, it's just an energy drain and it's not worth it, at least not at this point in my life. And so Mm -hmm. I, I do, there's plenty of other ways to do that. I will say you are very good about being intentional with the things that you know, that fill you with energy. Mm. Yeah. I think it was because you will go on multiple walks in a day if you're not feeling well, just because you know, if I go do this, it will make me feel better. And another energy fill you did not mention is uh, taking a bath Mm. or baths, (laughs) multiple in a day. (laughs) But you're, you're very intentional. I mean, the number of books that you've already read this year is more than I feel like I've read in the last two or three years, um, taking baths, going on walks, um, doing those things are intentional things that on an, on an every single day basis, you are doing all of them 
if not most of them for sure. And Mm -hmm. that's, that's something that is, you're very good about being intentional with knowing this fills me up. So I'm going to do more of it. Mm. Yeah. I still struggle. I feel like when I like to make people understand that, that I'm not perfect in this, I am very aware of my body. And I think it was because I got sick. And and when I got sick, I realized I was really sick because my body was depleted in all forms of energy. Like I was just down, you know? And my healing wasn't just adding all of these medications. My healing was like, okay, you're going to learn how to support your energy. And I learned it from a great physician and like chiropractor. And, and she was amazing at teaching me like the body aspect of how to support your body with energy. And I'm very aware of when I'm starting to fall and when I'm out of balance. And um, that took training though. Like that took me just paying attention. And that's really all it is. And it's easy to pay attention, I think, in our body. I think it's a little bit harder in our mind and our soul because I think sometimes when you get into those negative spirals, it's hard to see out of that. And so then you just keep spiraling. You stay in it and you stay in it and you stay a little bit lower and you start to justify and excuse your way to being there. Um, so that one has taken a lot more work on on for me at least. But I feel like that's where we have learned to help support each other. Yeah. In that. Like even this weekend, you um it was just clear and maybe it was part of this bold thing or um, you know, whatever else has been going on recently. Um And I could just tell, and you even admitted, like, I just don't feel like very, very good. Mm -hmm. And that's a cue to me to encourage you because sometimes, like you said, if you get in that spiral, it's hard to even go back to like, okay, what are those things that fill me up? Mm -hmm. And so that's where you're very good about encouraging me and I'm good about encouraging you. Like, why don't you go why don't you text a friend and why don't you go on a walk or why don't you just go grab a book and go sit in the bath? Why don't you go do this? And just encouraging each other to try to um, use those things that we know fill ourselves up and just go to do that. Because when you get in that spiral and you start to feel bad, then like you said, you just, you kind of get into that negative mindset so easily of like, well, I'm always going to be here. This is always going to be a problem. Nothing's going right. Um, you know, it's, it's so easy to get into that and, you know, having people close to you that can, that can help pull you back out of it is, is a key thing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we can have all the tools that we want to heal. We know as people generally what is good and what is not like, we know what's influences, influencing us in good and bad ways. I mean, some of us might need to pay more attention to it, but the hard part is getting yourself to do it, right? And that's what you're saying is like, when you start those spirals, an anxiety spiral, a depression spiral, a health spiral, like it is hard to convince yourself to do it because you get so protective of keeping yourself alive. Like you you fall into survival mode, which makes it hard to branch yourself back out of that and, and do something. So I think it's recognizing that just because you have the tools to heal doesn't mean they're naturally just going to happen. You have to be conscious and aware of putting those tools into practice, of convincing yourself and having other people support you in this to say like, no, now's a good time to use one of those. Like we have the tools. How are we using the tools? And I think that we talked about this with our mindset before or this this weekend, right? I won't get into all the details because it's private and I don't want to throw either one of us under the bus, but we were having the conversation of like, just because we know the right things to do doesn't mean we're going to do the right things. It's like our natural pull is probably not in that direction. It's how are you going to stop it and say like, okay, now's the time. Like I recognize that I'm spiraling. Probably never going to always just prevent the spiral. You're always going to do that. It's how do you stop it? And how do you make a, a pivot away from that spiral and in the right direction? That could be a physical thing. It could be a mental thing. It could be a spiritual thing. It could be all three of them coming together to really support you. But I think that's why it's important to recognize, okay, what in my life right now feels most out of balance? Is it my soul? Is it my mind? Is it my physical aspect? And even in my own healing journey, like I worked really hard in the body aspect of it until eventually the body aspect stopped making me get any better. I stalled out. And so what did I have to do? Then we switched to counseling, right? Like, okay, now it's time that we have to deal with this mindset part of us 
this emotional baggage that we've been carrying around and hauling around because carrying baggage around, like literal energy is being, being like, you know, used. Like if you think about it as like actual luggage, that takes a lot of energy to carry all that crap around with you. And just learning how to deal with that, to process through it, to get rid of it, takes literal weight and pounds off of your body because you no longer have to have the energy that it takes to store, hoard, and conserve all those memories and baggage, and you are able to free them up. And I think even when we get into our soul, you know, like a lot of people don't want to admit that aspect of their life, or maybe some people do, but they don't see that it's actually impacting. We know how you think, but how you think is impacting how your biology is running. You know, it's impacting how you view the world and the people inside your sphere and and what your purpose is. And that is really impacting the whole of who you are, maybe even more so, again, why I would put it at the top of the triangle than just your body and mind alone. So I think it's recognizing, okay, what in my life right now feels most out of balance? It's not to say that you're going to put all of your eggs in that basket because you can't healthify your mind without adding support to your body and your soul. You can't healthify your soul without both of those categories, but it's it's putting the emphasis there while also knowing that in the process, you have to be doing these other things to really boost that as well. But what are you going to focus on? Like what in your life feels most out of balance right now for you? I was thinking about that when you were talking about it. And one of the things that I was going to say is I think it's really easy to get trapped in this like, oh, my life feels out of balance, but actually identifying what that is. Yeah. Because so many things are intertwined Mm -hmm. that I feel like it really takes time sitting down and evaluating what really is the root of it that I think that's probably the step that I have avoided taking Mm -hmm. lately to actually identify what that is. Um, cause I feel like I'm really quick to say like, man, our life feels really out of balance, but identifying exactly what's causing that is something that I have not done. Right. And that makes a world of difference because it could be something really small that makes a huge difference. Like when you say my life is out of balance, it feels like so overwhelming that where do you even start? Yes. Is it even possible? And then we just don't do anything, right? And then we just sit here and like kind of sulk and let it be a threat to our life, which is going to constantly perpetrate like this cycle that is just everything's always out of balance. And you just get stuck there and so many people are stuck there. And then it's so easy to, it's easy to justify and come up with excuses of like, oh man, we're just so busy. We're, you know, hauling kids around from this and that and we're gone every weekend and, you know man, woe is me. We have all these, all these things that we do, but at the end of the day, that's having a negative attitude and a negative mindset towards those things too. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's also evaluating not just the things that are taking your time, but back to like, what is taking your energy? Mm -hmm. Because things that might be taking your energy are actually a choice for you to have a negative mindset around them. Um, like we, like we talked about for you, running is an energy drain for me. It's an energy fill for some people going to counseling might be an energy drain for other people. It might be empowering and it might fill them. Um, and I think sometimes you have a choice. Sometimes you can make a choice to have a, have a different or a better perspective around things to actually flip that to take it from an energy drain to an energy fill. And I think that's probably one of those things in my life that um, I tend to focus more on, uh, I have to do this again instead of, oh, I get the opportunity to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have the ability to change our perspective about everything. And next month I think is talking about how to healthify your thoughts. So we're going to talk a lot about how we change our perspective and change our thought process. But we can, like we can completely. And I even think about looking at things as energy fills and energy drains rather than is it healthy or is it not? 
helps you to see it for yourself. And it helps you to recognize that just because it might be an energy drain for me right now doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. Maybe it will, but maybe it won't. And knowing that our body has the ability to change and why I love the idea too of like the energy threshold, which I talk a lot about like in the bank account area of like an energy threshold is similar to a bank account. The more money you have, the less these daily or life stressors has the ability to affect you, right? Like, so if you have money in your bank account, you like, you have plenty of energy in your body. Then when something happens, like you get a flat tire or your transmission goes out or your dog has a big vet bill, right? Like those things can be debilitating if you're living close to zero. They can even put you into what's called energy debt. But if you have plenty of energy, then those those daily life things that are always going to come your way aren't as impactful, right? Like your body is able to move through them, process through them, and come out the other side relatively well. Whether it's emotional, life, whatever it is, right? Like we can process through that. That's a resilient body, but it takes energy to do that. On the flip side, the closer you get to zero, then you're kind of teetering on this energy threshold where you might have the energy, but you're pretty close to that survival mode, which is energy debt. When you have to start relying on credit to help you out, to sustain you. Now, that's great in the short term, but what happens long-term is the interest becomes more than you can almost sustain and the interest overtakes you and kind of swallows you whole and it just pushes you further into the state of energy debt, making it feel almost impossible to get out of. And I think that's where so many people are living in the state of energy debt where they're just so tired and overwhelmed and burnt out that we could be talking about all of this but it feels still so impossible because the amount of interest feels overwhelming. Look but at here's, you with the banking analogy. I know, right? I'm impressed. I have so many analogies today. I uh, I don't know that I've heard you say that. Really? No. Oh. I just, I just made it seem like I talk about this all the time, but maybe I don't. Sometimes in my <laughs> head, I think I talk about things a lot because I talk about them inside my head to myself a lot. This is a problem. <laughs> It really is. It really is. Um, <laughs> hey. Oh, I'm... yeah. You know, I told you this was happening. <laughs> why, why are you so surprised? I'm like, you said nothing about that. <laughs> uh-huh. In my head, I told you like six times. Yeah. Um. Okay. But the but it is. It's It can feel overwhelming. But here's the deal. It's not as difficult as we think to get out of energy debt and to pay off that interest but it does take time and it takes support, right? It's just like paying off credit card debt. You have to be a little bit more cautious, right? You have to put a little bit more work into it. You have to do something to help yourself. Well, and- I think we we get so much into a routine that I feel like until you stop and you uh, you start to actually identify what are those things that are energy fills, you don't really know what those are. So I think, mm-hmm. you know, what I would say is, how do you get out of energy debt? First thing is you stop and understand what are those things that fill you with energy? Because unless you're doing things to create a positive Mm -hmm. change, then you're going to continue to be in debt and continue to get worse. But it's identifying what those energy fills are and then prioritizing them. Because I think so many times we get into situations where we have excuses and say like, oh man, like I wish I had time to do this or I wish I had time to do that. No, that's a choice. Mm -hmm. Like you're choosing to prioritize something that drains you over something that fills you. And I think that's something that we've learned too of like, yeah, sometimes it's frustrating when there's chaos going on and you grab a book and go head to the bath. <laughs> like so, sometimes it's frustrating. Are you calling me but out? Right it's now? no. I mean <laughs> I'm not saying that you do it every time, but there are times when there's chaos, kids are fighting, things are crazy, we've just gotten home from a long day of whatever, but I also recognize, you know what? If you go and do this for 45 minutes, it's going to fill you up to the point where um, everybody in the family is going to benefit from that. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's having that positive perspective of an understanding what it is that fills you up, but also your spouse or your kids or 
whatever that is and encouraging that so that um, you can help them stay out of or get out of that energy debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because here's the deal. When we're in energy debt, and I think this is really fascinating, we'll steal energy from other people. We'll attempt to steal energy from other people. Like think about people in your life. You can see it if you really think about it. Think about people in your life who are just trying to steal your energy. Can you think about it? Yeah, I do that to you a lot. Or I have in the past. Like how? Um, Like if I'm really stressed or anxious or um, overwhelmed, I will tend to self-sabotage and in a way like get you to try to pull me back, which for me, like that's me trying to take your energy, trying to say like, I need you to pull me out of this instead of just figuring it out on my own. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We, uh, we'll do it by pulling, trying to pull people to our level, which makes, we're trying to even out energy, right? Cause energy is constantly being exchanged and you can feel When you walk into a room with someone who's functioning at a lower energy, you can feel that if you're functioning at a higher energy, right? Like if you walk into a room with someone who's really angry or sad or just hopeless, and and we can exchange energy with them by giving them a hug, by talking to them. The part that's hard for a lot of people and something that's been really hard for me as someone who I consider myself more empathetic um, is giving, it's helping to boost their energy without giving their your energy. Because we talk about like the cup overfilling or the cup, my cup is empty, right? Like, and a lot of people are working from these empty cups and then we're just looking, like we're thirsty for energy. And so we're going to get it in all the wrong places, right? Why people become addicted and they tend to hurl insults at other people. But here's the deal. We can be people who can help those people without them stealing our energy. We have to learn how to protect our energy while also filling them up. And that is something we're going to talk about next time on the podcast. <laughs> not, not not next week, the next time we're together on the podcast. But I think that's really interesting to think about too is also in this time is to understand not just what fills me up, but what is draining me and maybe who is stealing my energy that I am giving it to them. Why I am letting these people steal my energy. It could be a coworker who's taking advantage of you. Or a boss who's taking advantage of you. It's not to say that you can't do good work and be a good employee, but it's how do you do that with boundaries? (laughs) How do you instill boundaries, which is so important because that protects you and it also helps other people, which is what I had to learn. Me not giving to other people was not me being a bad person. It was me actually being the best person to say like, this is yours to deal with. And as long as I'm giving it to you, I'm masking the pain that you have to deal with. That's going to make you healthier and better. And so setting those boundaries. But I remember you, I remember you going through and learning that understanding. Oh yeah. And I had that, to learn it. I mean, it was hard. Yeah. Cause you used to give, 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 give. And and then I'd nobody come home and try to there. steal from you. Yeah, nobody was there to fill you up. Mm-hmm. And and then, uh, yeah, you tried to steal from me. And that's not a safe place mm-hmm. within a marriage to, <laughs> to be. Um, and so that was something that you you had to learn, how to give to other people without them taking from you. Mm-hmm. And you know what that comes down to? Yes, boundaries. But it comes down to your soul. It comes down to what you believe, because here's the deal. If we go back to like biblical health, I think this shows like we should be overflowing with energy, with love, with all these things. But so many of us are just living with our glass half full because we're trying to fill the glass. Meanwhile, we're letting everyone poke holes in that. But even if we have holes being poked in us, like if we're being constantly filled ourselves, we have plenty to go around. We should without Mm -hmm. that feeling threatened. But when your energy becomes threatened and you feel like someone's taking it from you, you're going to get bitter. You're going to grow resentments. You're going to have all these things. Or when you feel like you're carrying other people's baggage around, which is not your job to do. I thought it was my job for a long time. And I was very, I was very strong and independent because of it. Um, But it's not healthy. Anyways, I regress. Back to it. You've got to know your energy fills, but it's also important to understand what also could be taking your energy 
And it could be your own mindset. You could be your own worst enemy. Is it just the thoughts that you have throughout the day? Is it um, what you believe? Is it what other people have told you? Like, is it your drive to work? Maybe you need to mix that up. Maybe it's what you listen to. Maybe it's social media. Like there's tons of things that could be stealing our energy or draining our energy that we're just, it's so normal in our everyday that we don't pay attention to it. But starting to pay attention to and maybe putting some, again, boundaries on some of the things that are energy drains or trying to shift your perspective on them or how you do them. Like one that I've used in my classes a lot, and I know we've got to wrap this up because this is getting long. These always get so long. Um, but is bedtime for me is a huge energy drain, which is probably why I sneak off to the bath a lot of times. But I think it's just like, <laughs> I'm not you, bitter. Don't worry. It feels so overwhelming to me. And it, there was a lot of times when you were in your previous job, you were gone a lot on work trips. And so I was home with the kids all day, 24 hours, seven days a week. And I felt like I didn't get a ton of breaks some of those times. Plus when your kids are little and they're waking up at night. There's a lot of layers to this, but bedtime can be really stressful. One of the things that I learned is like, that can be an energy drain to me, but I'm constantly thinking, okay, I can't change that. Like I still need to, and I want to put my kids to bed because they know how important it is. How can I do that in a way that also fills my tank? So like last night, like I might take a bath before it's actual bedtime and just prepare myself, or I might take a bath after bedtime that's going to refuel my tank. So I kind of do that either either end of the spectrum, depending on what time we put them to bed. But like last night, like I sat in bed with them and mom reads her book, you read your book because they're in chapter book phase. And like, I don't need to listen to them read a chapter that they're going to read at home and then go to school and read three more. And I can't keep up with that, right? So it's like, I sat down and I read a book and just being together in the same space, you're better about listening to them read. That's really hard for me. Sometimes I'll read out loud to them. So trying to find ways that you can change your view and your perspective of some of these energy drains that do make it more filling. Anyways, okay, okay. we've really got to wrap this up. Oh, what were you going to say? No, what I was going to say is, so what's the action? Would you? What action would you say? Just one thing, mm-hmm. one thing that somebody needs to do out of this. Other than going and buying a planner, because (laughs) we're going to be going through all 12 topics from that planner the rest of this year. Um, What what is that action that people need to take um, to be able to actually make a change with this? Because that's that's the goal. I mean, we don't want you to sit here and listen to us for an hour or however long this has been um, going through this and not actually have it make a difference. So what what is that one thing that you would say somebody should go after this and do? Right. I think it's just pay attention to how you feel. How much energy do you have? Even having it rated on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being, I feel great. My body's functioning well. And you can look at this as your mind, body, and soul, but you can just look at it as the whole of who you are. When you understand that and you start to pay attention to what is altering my energy in a good way and a negative way, you start to gain more control of your life because then you have the ability to say like, okay, this is really draining me. I can delegate it. I can get rid of it. I can change my perspective about it, or I can do an energy fill that's going to come back in and try to rebalance that. So that would be mine is just right now, this week, start to pay attention to what is, where is my energy falling and what can I do to change that for the better? Not just add in all this energy, but really creating that balanced energy. Because if you have way too much energy, which we're going to get to, if you want to learn more about energy, we have an entire thing coming out this month, a free quiz that you can take all about energy. If you're not, if you want to be the first to know about it, get on the email list, the weekly fill over at thelivingwell.com. But inside, I'm really going to teach you, okay, here's where you fall on the energy threshold. Here's how you help yourself. Because some people are going to be like, I feel like I have so much energy, which comes out in the form of anxiety. It can come in the form of jitter, jitters. Like there's lots of things. It's not, we don't want too much energy either. We want the balance energy. And so I'm going to teach you how to balance your energy inside that based on where you're starting from, because we can always change. Um, but it really does begin with pay attention to your energy. And if you want to get more specific with it, Pay attention to the energy. Like, how is the energy of your soul? How is the energy of your mind? How's the energy of your body? Like, where do you feel energy drains and energy fills within those? 
And ultimately, how can you do more things that fill you up? Life is always going to drain you. Like it always is. We don't need to be worried about draining our own energy as much as we do about just filling ourselves because in the process of filling ourselves, we're going to create balance. Thoughts? Oh, here's the one thing. I feel like I am out of balance in my body. I feel like I've done so much soul work, so much mind work. I feel like those are really great, but I feel like this is the year, and I kind of mentioned it last time, where I feel like I'm really creating, recreating balance inside my body of like, I, that is really where I'm putting a lot of my focus and not to say I'm putting a lot of focus on my soul and my mind. Like I'll always do that work and that takes constant work. But I now need to come back in and recognize, okay, there are things in my life that I'm doing to my body that are not filling it. Um, they're just old patterns that are are normal, but just because it's normal doesn't mean it's healthy. Okay, what about you? Where do you feel most out of balance? Your mind, body, or soul? I think my body as well. Mm-hmm. Um, We've both done a lot of soul and mind work the last yeah. four years, five years. Yeah. But the one thing I was going to say when you talk through your action steps is I feel like the biggest thing is just being willing to observe mm-hmm. your surroundings. So the more um, the more you observe how you feel when you do things or when other things happen to you or when other people um, maybe talk to you or whatever, then you can start to realize and understand what it is that fills you and drains you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like whether you keep a note on your phone or you have a journal with you, like as those things come up, just start to jot those down. I feel like that's just the quickest, easiest way to just over the course of the month of February, just spend time um, continuing to develop the list of like, here's what fills me, here's what drains me. And then again, start to focus on, um, what it is that fills you. And then those things that drain drain you, try to look at how can you have a different or better perspective going into those. So those aren't pulling your energy away, um, but that you're kind of freely giving um, or having just a different, better perspective around that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So good. We talked a long time again, but I'm going to wrap that up and hope that everyone starts to have an understanding of what energy is and why it's so important even in the scope of health. Well, you can do everything right, but it might might not work. And it's because your body and mind and soul are out of balance. And we have to balance all three in order to truly achieve the health that we're looking for. Plus, life isn't just about health, right? It's about using your health to live your purpose. And that's really why I'm here because I believe you were made for living well. And that means using your health to live your life. Okay, that's it for today. We will be back next week talking about how to healthify your mind. But in the meantime, we have a lot of great podcast episodes coming out this month. So stay tuned for those. Don't forget to grab your Nourish Planner at thelivingwell.com. Sign up for the email list to make sure you can get that free quiz that's going to help you start to implement this in your everyday life. It really is going to help you because that's what I'm here for. Okay, that's it for today. Peyton, thanks for being on again. Yeah. You have we'll 10 you more of these to do. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Okay. We'll and talk just to, you to guys clarify, later. you said we will be back next week. You will be back next I week. I will be back next I week. I will not. You will not be back until March. Yes. Okay. See ya. See ya. Bye.